Then for Colorado, on December 15th, smashing the all-time daily snow record by more than double. Yet the weather stations have been moved a couple of different times, and you can see there's different readings and temperatures. Is this truly the snow total amount, or was it actually greater than being registered? Also, Salt Lake City, same thing, smashing their previous snow record, yet their weather station has been moved to the end of an airport runway. Fort Collins, Colorado, almost doubling the previous snow record. The same thing, the station has been moved and it now lies in the center of an asphalt parking lot. Also, a look at the climate network across the United States of the unperturbed or unmoved stations, difference in temperature of the 1,000. 218 stations across the climatology network in America, only 410 have not been moved. Taking a look at the contiguous temperatures, even with the moved stations, it's still showing a downward trend. December 15th, massive snows across the western United States. Denver, Colorado smashes the old snow record by 2.5 times. The current weather stations at Denver International Airport showing 7.7 .7 inches of snow. It was such a rare snowstorm that they even asked the public to come out with their own trucks to help plow off sidewalks and streets because the city was completely overwhelmed. One interesting thing. These records go back to 1897. There's only been 13 years that there's been snow on December 15th. Yet of those 13, six are within the last 10 years, showing a trend of snowier winters. There were 500 flight cancellations. Denver gets snow every year. They are one of the most prepared airports in the United States for snow, period. Yet they had to delay and cancel 500 flights. The severity of this was absolutely scales above anything that has happened this early in the year. They were completely unprepared. So wondering about the snow depth totals, I found this incredibly interesting article, Why Denver's Official Weather Station Should Be Moved. It talks about the three location changes of the weather station in Denver over the last 120 years. A little bit closer view for you. You can see there's an 18 mile difference now where the temperatures and snow is recorded. And that 18 mile difference between 1882 and the present location can change the temperature as much as four to eight degrees Celsius, depending on the day. Some days it's cooler in the city, some days it's cooler out in the airport area. Case in point, this is the snowfall total. You'll notice the blue is the most stable reading of them all, yet, What's being used today for temperature and snowfall is the one that's fluctuating the greatest at Denver International. Temperatures as well. The light green, that's Denver International. The blue, back to Stapleton again. Notice how high the highs are for Denver International. The warm is warmer and the cold is warmer as well. They both show significantly warmer readings than the old stations did. This is an overlay graph. As you can see, the peaks and troughs the peaks are higher at Denver, as well as sometimes lower, but obviously it's warmer and it's showing a warmer trend by at least 2 degrees Celsius. Salt Lake City, no different. They had a smashing snowstorm, breaking records back to 1922. The weather station was in a different location at that time. Here is a look at the weather stations from 1899 to 1936 throughout Salt Lake City. The current location is at the end of a runway where aircraft take off and land. Gee, I wonder if there'd be any excess heat from exhaust gas from jet engines. Significantly always two degrees Celsius warmer at that location than it was previously in the city. Prior to moving it directly onto the runway, it was on top of this aviation building and you can clearly see the air conditioning vents just to the right of that. Which makes you ask, was the snow total even greater than what was registered if it would have been in the old location? Instead of being 7.7 .7 inches, would it have been 11 inches? I dug up an old PDF out of the archive library. This talked about White Christmas from 1928 to 1997. It's still in paper, so it can't be manipulated too much. But the number of years with five inches or more falling of snow 
is only 1% of the time. So this is the second year in a row now that this is occurring. So statistically, it's not in the range where it should be. Look at the warmest and the coldest winter season temperatures in December, January, February. I circled in the yellow box where you might take a look at the mean temperatures. This is the mean average temperature from October 1st to January 20th. I couldn't exactly dig out the temperatures to match up the old paper records with the new digital records. If anybody can help me with that, I would highly appreciate it. I wanted to see if there was truly a correlation. Fort Collins, 7.4 inches of snow compared to 4 inches. That's nearly double again that same date that was a massive storm that swept through. The station has been moved. It was one of the only stable stations in Colorado that had not been moved, but suddenly, for some reason, it has just been moved in the last couple of years. It's only four-tenths of a mile away, but the new location chosen was in the middle of an asphalt parking lot. Was there really more snow in the asphalt parking lot or less snow in the asphalt parking lot when this new record was registered? In the old location, would there have been more snow falling? Or at this new location, is there more snow falling? These moving stations are all tied to the automated surface observing system. They're all tracked by the FAA, that's at the airports, Department of Defense, NOAA. And when you get into it, the historical climatology network of the 1,218 stations, only 410 have not been manipulated or moved. So the temperatures and readings we're getting now, significantly, it's always showing a warmer temperature in these new locations. Well, when you put something on top of a building near an air conditioning vent, it might actually show a warmer reading. Tucson University in Arizona, putting that temperature collection data station right in the middle of an asphalt parking lot, cars need to transit through that gate so the exhaust gas from the automobiles is going to send false readings. If it's going to capture snow there, will it capture the same amount or will the cars manipulate it? Will the flat surface of the parking lot allow more wind to drive the snow to another place? If it sets a snow record, it's got to be a serious snow record in these kind of places. When you hear people talking about how temperature stations are placed next to air conditioning outlet vents to show higher reading in the temperatures, feast your eyes on this. Another really good one here in an airport, the aircraft parking is right next to the thermometer shelter. Now, what do you honestly think with the escaping gas from a jet engine is going to have Ardmore, Oklahoma, temperature reading right there at the intersection. What do you think happens at rush hour? So when we come and take a look at the climatic network, you can see a significant difference in temperatures. The band range between each number is actually five degrees Celsius. So taking a look at where the blue line is, that's the unperturbed, unmoved stations compared to the red line, showing a significant two to two and a half, possibly three degrees Celsius increase in temperatures at the new station locations compared to the old stations. A little bit closer look here for you. And if you can't read graphs that well, let's take a look and let's colorize a few sections of the United States and the overall average temperatures from the unperturbed, unmoved into the new locations. You can definitely see there's a difference. Even with all of this happening and all these new heat island heat sink areas where they place the temperature monitors and snow barrels, contiguous U.S. is still showing an average downward trend since 2012. Bob Tisdale did a good job digging this out. Monthly global land and ocean surface temperature anomalies from the year 2001 to 2015. Put your marks right on the point zero eight line looking at NOAA's adjusted temperatures. Wow, that jumped up. Let's look at it again. Here you go. This is the old temperature at 0.04, the new temperature 0.09. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. It is smoke and mirrors and temperatures out there. Please remember to subscribe to my channel, Adapt2030. Pass this through your social media. Keep this going as a truth platform for information that can be compared and shared amongst the community who's looking for answers as to why the pieces don't fit any longer.